I'm going to teach you if sexual intercourse has a negative impact on physical performance. And we're going to start right now. What's up, everybody? It's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com. And if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in learning how to be more explosive, you want to be a better athlete, you want to get more coordinated, and you want to turn into a freak, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so that you can learn how to become a better athlete and work your way to becoming a champion. So at Garage Strength, we get asked all the time by our older athletes, by our professional athletes, by our post-collegiate athletes, and we get DMs in our Instagram, through Facebook, emails. Dean, I just watched Rocky, and Mickey, his trainer, said that women weaken the legs. Women weaken legs. So we get asked these questions. Does sexual intercourse have a negative impact on physical performance or on athletic performance. And these come up all of the time. And fortunately for us, Gerald Zavorsky from Colorado State and Georgia State put together a nice study back in 2019 where he dives deep into what sexual intercourse and orgasms have, what the effect is on physical performance. Women weak in legs, huh? So the way that Zaborski set this study up is he found eight males that were 28 years of age, plus or minus five years. So they came in, they basically were told, all right, this is what the test is. This is what the goal is. We want to see what does sexual intercourse do to your performance in various tests. You would either have sex the night before, they wouldn't have sex the night before, or this is the interesting one, they would just do yoga the night before. All three are great tests that we can utilize. So again, sex in the, in the evening, they wouldn't have sex in the evening, or they would do yoga in the evening. And then they would come into the research lab and they would do different exercises to see how they handled the stress and to see how their body was responding. And so then we could learn, do the athletes that have that had the orgasm, did they perform higher or, or lower on these tests compared to their, to their control? And so some of these measurements were they wanted to get their heart rate to 170 beats per minute and see how they handled that, that elevated heart rate. They were gonna test their vertical jump. They were gonna test their grip strength. They were gonna test their push-ups to failure, so their muscular endurance, and they were gonna test their reaction time. And when they went through these tests, they came up with a few different results that showed us what does sexual intercourse and orgasms, what does that do to your physical performance? So before we dive into the actual results behind the test, let's cover some of these pitfalls behind the study that Zaborski put together. So a couple, couple of different issues that I have with the study is that there's a low number of test subjects. There's only eight test subjects. That's so not a big population, especially at universities. It's going to be pretty easy to find athletes that are going to be willing to participate in this type of study. The second pitfall that I've found is that it's a very short time frame, right? It's 24 hours. Is it important to test this? Absolutely. It's very important to test this. But I would like to see in the future a little bit more of a long term test. I've been around Aaron Hartwell, who's a, a multiple time Olympic medalist in sprint cycling. And he has even told me that when he went to the 92 Olympics and the 96 Olympics, where he earned medals, silver and bronze, he spent a month and a half to two months completely away from his family. Piros Dimas has shared this story with me as well. Months away from his wife and children to prepare for the Sydney Games, for the Atlanta Games, so that they could almost embrace their sport through this monastic or monk-like living. And I think that sex has a lot to do with that. So having a longer term time frame to test from might give us a little bit more of a, of a better peek inside what sex can do for you from an emotional perspective and how abstaining might be a little bit better for you long term if you're completely engulfed in your sport you know in that time frame of six to eight weeks we've all heard about 
fighters, MMA guys, and boxers that completely abstain from, from sex because it increases their frustration and aggressiveness. Zavorsky doesn't mention really what are those previous sexual experiences? How experienced are these guys, the men, the 20, the 25 plus year old men that they brought in to test? So are they very sexually experienced or, or are they not? They don't really cover that. And they also don't go over what is their athletic ability because that could also come into play with how their body responds to these tests. So let's get deep into those results and see what actually happened. Did they go? Yes. Not only did they go, they also rated the level of their orgasm. So they had these athletes, he had these test subjects rate the level at which they went. So what was their, their enjoyment behind that orgasm? So what were those results say? Their vertical jump, same, neutral, okay? So the vertical jump stayed the same. Handling of the 120 beats per minute heart rate, same. Grip strength, what happened with the grip strength? Did they get a little bit stronger? Did, did, they, did they see an increase in that? Same. Push-ups to failure, did this improve? Did their endurance improve? What ended up happening? Same. Their reaction time, the exact same, okay? So this is a 24-hour time frame, and based off of this, Nothing changed at all except for one thing. What they noticed, what their side effects were, is that the individuals that had a better orgasm had a lower systolic blood pressure. So their blood pressure actually improved the next morning. Based off of this, in a 24 hour time frame, there will be zero negative or positive implications on your physical performance. And included in that is if you have a very good orgasm, your blood pressure is actually probably going to improve the next morning. Now, I want to share a story is that one thing, and this might not be completely true, is that my collegiate track coach, Harry Groves, he was the coach for the 1968 Olympic team. And he informed us that one of the greatest long jumpers to ever walk the planet, he is the second best distance ever recorded, Bob Beeman was known for wanting to have sexual intercourse the night before he competed. And he did this in 1968 when he had an 8.9 8 meter jump, which is absolutely off the charts. Whether or not this is true, I have zero clue. Coach Groves was good at embellishing stories, but at the same time, this tells us that there's really not gonna be a positive or negative implication in that short 24 hour time frame. Now, if you're under a lot of stress, and you just need to get that off of your mind, it might be positive. It's gonna come down to a much more individualized process. So make sure that you understand what this study means. It's a very small amount of test subjects. It's also a very short time frame. It might mean a little bit different if we start to look at this from a much bigger picture. If you want more information about sex and how it can impact your training, click on this video right now. Until next time, guys, peace.